Merry Christmas, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee. I'm going to take you through tonight's GFS. I really thought this was a very interesting run all the way around. There are lots of things going on. First off, we have the this historic, and it really is a historic day, Christmas Eve into Christmas Day with back-to-back -back record highs. And we're going to see temperatures here in the 70s in many locations, which are going to set all-time record highs for the month of December. Uh, it's, it's probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But I want to take you through the long range because uh, we do have lots of things going on. First off, let's go into the weekend, and we have the southwest flow. So, you know, Friday is a given. It's going to be mild. We'll have a little front that will go through, and it will be cooler on Saturday with a wave going by. And Sunday is probably going to be a warm day. But you can see right here there's an indentation in the flow. There is cold Canadian air that's coming down that's going to be building in. And we also have a storm coming out of the southwest. Now, the issue with the earlier runs of the GS, GFS was that that high was going to hold in. Uh, now the models have kind of gone along with the Europeans' idea of pushing the high out. Um, some of the ensembles are, are colder. Uh, I think it's going to be a snow to ice to rain event for the interior northeast. It might even be a significant icing event in some areas. But as we go in the longer range, I mentioned yesterday that a northwest flow develops, and I often find that northwest flows can be rather interesting and at times rather dangerous because we can't see what really is there. And you can see the ridge is starting to pop up in the west. You can also see that Scandinavian block is, is really chipping away at the low pressures that have been over the Arctic for so long. And as we rotate this around, now I don't know if this is real. We're going to have to see if the subsequent runs verify this. But this is a powerhouse little vortex that forms that moves southeastward into the flow and would bring in a significant shot of cold air here around New Year's and going into the weekend that follows. But that northwest flow holds. You can see the ridge out here in the west stays in place. The Scandinavian block high uh, breaks off and uh, moves over northern Siberia and into the Arctic regions, uh, which is a much different look than what we've had. And then uh, we continue to see this flow that develops from the northwest. Now, it's not quite cross-polar, but it is certainly colder and will bring temperatures back down to normal or maybe even a little bit below for the start of January. And you'll notice as we go to the end of the period, two-week period, we're still with this idea of ridging in the west, kind of a split flow here. But there's weather systems one after another coming down. So what we're going to have to start paying attention to is if this pattern sets up as indicated, that over time, one of these weather systems may wind up doing something. And it also will confirm the trend that we are going to go to a colder look. And notice all up through here, up through the Arctic regions, we have much higher pressures, much higher heights, uh, which is what we refer to. Um, when we're talking about um, the upper air all through this region, which is what we've been waiting to see if it was going to happen, because that would be a complete breakdown of the uh, upper air pattern across the Arctic. We don't see the big vortex over the Aleutians, much weaker system there. So this is all, I think, going to play out very interestingly once we get through uh, this weekend. Now, I'm going to just jump real quick to the short range, and I did do a post on this which explains it, what's going on, and uh, put up here the eastern U.S. view, and we're going to switch over to um, precip, and we'll also roll it back to the beginning of the period here. And, of course, these are this, the showers from last night have moved out. We have our warm day. little front goes by with a little bubble high on Saturday. We get into some rain or showers with that. And then a cold front comes through on Sunday. Now, this is a very cold high that's coming down. And in fact, on Monday, with a high in this position, it is very cold across interior northern New England. And that cold air bleeds all the way down into northern Virginia. I would not be surprised on Monday if temperatures were in the 30s all day and in some places not that far away, maybe even upper 20s. And you can notice as <clears throat> low pressure starts to move northeastward out of the Gulf states that we do see away from the coast an area of snow and ice that develops that carries through into uh, upstate New York and uh, into uh, eventually into central and northern New England. But this, again, could wind up being a significant icing event for 
perhaps the northern parts of the Hudson Valley on northward, and as I also indicated that the some of the ensembles are are actually colder. So we'll see how this plays out overnight when we get some more model information. Another wave is likely to come by on Thursday. This is another piece of good news. We seem to be getting rain events now with greater frequency that's putting dent indentations into the drought. Now this is that powerhouse system that's coming down. Now all it shows here would be a simple cold front, but it is a fairly good shot of cold air that comes in for that weekend right after New Year's. And then that air mass pulls out. So now this is the point where we really try not to be too literal because we know this is going to change. But the overall look to me is that we are continuing to see this grinding process of slow pattern change across North America that's going to take us into January. In the meantime, I would like to say to everyone, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to your families. Enjoy your day. This is a very, very a big day in my house. Um, not only do we do a wonderful seafood dinner, but uh, I sing in the church choir. So we're in two masses tonight at 4 p.m. and at 10 p.m. at my uh, local church, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, where I've been a parishioner for uh, almost 30 years. So it's a wonderful day for me and a wonderful day for my family while my kids are home. And uh, it's it's just great. So I hope everything is well by you. Um, the uh, comfort and joys of the season to everyone. And uh, we will, of course, keep you updated on the weather as best we can, although I might take it a little bit slow over the next two days.